Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a pink monochromatic makeup look for Easter or the springtime. I hope you guys are enjoying the spring and I hope you guys have a wonderful Easter. It's to celebrate the resurrection of Christ and it's just a day filled with fun and happiness. And just remember you are beautiful for you are fearfully wonderfully made. I'll see you next time. Hi there! So today I'm going to be using the Wonder Woman MAC Limited Edition Eyeshadow Palette that I bought a few years ago. I'm, for the lid, I'm going to be doing a baby pink shade, and I'm going to be using the TNT 118 brush. It's just a dome-shaped brush. Any eyeshadow lid brush that you have will do, and you can also use any eyeshadow brand that you want. You just want to find the same shade, that's it. And that's just because this eyeshadow palette I bought a few years ago and I don't know if it's still available. I don't think it is. So you just want to pack the eye lid color on in padding motions to keep any fallout from happening and then once it's on then you can do windshield wiper motions up to the crease and kind of blend it out more. Once you have the eyelid color on then we're going to go in with the crease color and for the crease I'm going to be using a hot pink color. Now don't be afraid of the hot pink color. That's actually kind of fun. So I'm using a long bristled blending brush. Any blending brush will do. I'm using the TNT 132 and I'm just going to go in windshield wiper motions back and forth. I start out on the outer corner of my eye and work to the inner corner. And you don't want to take it too high, you just want to take it right up to the brow bone. And you also don't want to take it too low because you don't want to cover up your eyelid with it. So I'm going to be doing just back and forth, kind of in a C shape on the outer corner of my eye and just drag it towards the inner corner. Then you're going to just do the exact same thing on this eye. Just back and forth. You can kind of see what I'm talking about a little bit with the C shape. On the outer corner I do small circular motions. And then the crease, I just go back and forth in blending motions. Once you have the crease color on, then you're going to go in with a darker shade. Now the shade that I am using, it looks like a mauve color. You can see it there. And I'm using the same brush, just a clean one. And I'm focusing this color on the outer corner of my eye. And I'm doing small C shapes first in small circular motions and then I drag it through my crease more and you want to get it really tight in your crease because you still want to see the hot pink color behind it because that gives it more dimension and you just want to go back and forth in blending motions and on the outer corner small circular motions now it really helps to go in small C shapes you can kind of see on this side what I'm talking about where I bring it back and forth over the outer corner of my lid and then onto my crease. And I'm also using a very light hand for this. This helps to keep more control because if you press too hard with this, it'll have that dark eyeshadow take over. And that's not what I'm trying to achieve here. I just want to give a little bit of dimension and kind of smoke it out a little bit. So once you have this blended, what I did was I went in with the same brush that I used for the hot pink shade, just with no excess product on it. And I'm just blending out the two colors to make sure there's no harsh lines and to cover any choppiness. Next, I'm going back in with the baby pink color on my lid with the same exact brush. And I'm just gonna repack the color on to brighten the lid color more because the crease colors did fade it out but I'm not taking it to the outer corner of my eye because I want to leave that dark shade there. So once you have that packed on, what I did was I went back in with the brush that I used for the dark mauve shade with no excess product on it. I'm just going to blend it with the lid color because I want to make sure everything blends and looks smooth and it just smoothly goes from one color to the next. Now I'm going to go in with a brow bone color. I am using a very pale baby pink color. It has a little bit of shimmer on it and I'm just going to pack that onto the brow bone. So you just want to do padding motions with it. You also want to tap excess product off. It, 
I don't know if you've noticed, but that's what I've been doing with every product that I use. Well, powder products, I should say. Now I'm going to curl my eyelashes. And you just want to squeeze the eyelash curler as close as you can to your eyelash roots to help lift it up. And you want to do it multiple times. Now I'm going to go in with the MAC False Lashes Mascara. And the shade that it is is False Black. And you just start at the root and wiggle it outwards. And you also want to focus on the middle and outer corner of the eye because that kind of helps to make your eyelashes be more awake looking with your eyes. It's kind of the same concept with the eyeshadows. You want to focus the dark colors on the outer corner and then blend them inward because when the darker shades are on the outer corner of your eyes, that makes your eyes look wider and more awake. So in case you're wondering why. Now I'm going in with the mascara on my lower lashes and if you notice I didn't put any pink shades on my lower lash line because that could make you look sick and so that's the reason why I didn't do that. Now I'm going to go in with Bare Minerals Warmth. This is like a bronzer and I'm going to first tap it into the lid and swirl it around in the lid because that's how you're supposed to use the product and we'll start in the hollows of my cheeks. This helps to slim the face. That's why, you know, contouring has been so popular is because it slims your face down. And a lot of women like that. So I'm also going to bring it onto my forehead as well. And that's just to balance my face out. Because if you just put it on the hollows of your cheeks, your face just kind of ends up looking unbalanced. Now I'm gonna go in with a clean brush to blend out the product. For me, I feel like I have better control when I do this because that way I ensure that I'm not adding more product to my face and I don't want it to go in places where it shouldn't be, so that's why I use a clean brush. So you just wanna blend it out in circular motions on your face and then moving back and forth, but you don't wanna take the color too close to your mouth because that would just be a little bit too dramatic. So once you have that blended, then we're going to go in with blush. I am using the Hello Kitty Graffiti palette and I'm going to be using the baby pink shade. Now for this look, I'm going to put the blush starting at the apples of my cheeks and working my way back in small circular motions. This helps to blend out the, br the blush more. And if you don't really know where the apples of your cheeks are, smile while putting your blush on. You can see that's what I'm doing here. And I'll help you to find the outer edge of the apples of your cheeks too, because you don't want to take it too far in. You don't want it to be directly on top of the apples of your cheeks because if, it gets, if the blush gets too close to your nose, it can kind of cause the rosacea look. So once you have your blush blended, then we're going to go on to a highlight. So the highlight that I'm using is going to be a matte shade. It's the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the Ethereal Light. And I'm just using the TNT T20 brush. It's just an angle blush brush, really. And I'm also bringing it a little bit on um, my cheeks closer to my nose to kind of clean up my blush to make sure that it doesn't get too close to the nose to avoid the rosacea look. So that's just a helpful hint if you went crazy with your blush. Now I'm going in with a lip liner and I'm using the NYX 848 Flower Lip Liner. And I'm just going to line my lips and I'm also going to put it all over my lips to work as a base for my lipstick. And that just kind of helps to make your lipstick last a little bit longer is when you have a base on it. It also helps to put like a um, chapstick on your lips before starting your makeup so that way you can hydrate your lips. Now I'm going to go in with Kardashian Beauty Joystick in the shade Baby Doll. And I actually really like this lipstick. It just glides so smoothly on my lips. I got it a couple years ago. I think Ulta might still have it. Not entirely sure. 
But now I'm going to go in with a lip gloss and I'm using Famous Palette Potion distributed by Be A Bombshell Cosmetic. It's just a hot pink lip gloss. So once you have your lip gloss on, like I like to go in with my fingers, just kind of blend it out. You can see I'm doing it right now. Once you have your lips done, then we're going to go in with a setting spray to set your face makeup. So I'm using e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set, and this will just help to make your makeup last longer. And I hope you enjoyed this look, and I thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like it if you liked it. I'll see you next time.